stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. If I were to consult our special guest today, I would probably say your virtual stretch clinic that guides you to move the body. To still, uh, to help, that helps you move the body instead of helps, I would probably say that guides you move the body to still the mind. I'd like to present Yael Reed. Yael is a producer right here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. She has her own show called Manifest for TV. But I'm going to have Yael say a few words about herself, Yael. Namaste, which means the goddess that I am, acknowledge the god and the goddess that you are. I am Omni Ready. Yael Reed is the birth name that I received. Omni Ready is the being that I am now because I am ready, but above all, I'm Omni Ready. The more you are in the now, the more you realize and you become an observer, and the more you enjoy and appreciate your life. That's what is the purpose of the show, to bring you back to the being that you are. Everything that is out there is out there, but it's not supposed to be you and looking at out there as you are being because of what is out there. You're supposed to be without out there, which last time when we did the yoga and you asked us to close our eyes, it's, it's so powerful to just close just your eyes and look us. inside. Right. It's the most beautiful place that you can be inside. And we've been taught, like when we go to school, it's all about outside, outside, outside. I, did, I don't even teach my girls, I let them be. Right. And then when they ask questions, I just answer the best way that I can without right. judgment, right. attachment, or resistance to what is. Instead of saying, this is a tree, I say, this is called a tree. Now you can call it whatever you want. We're going to save a lot of that for in just a moment because I really have a lot of questions to ask you. Something that I'm so happy you're here today, Yael, because you can help clear a lot of cobwebs in our mind about what yoga is all about, the mental aspect of yoga. Before we move on, I'd like to acknowledge our crew. We have a great team today. On camera, we have Chris Goutman, Willie Spate, Leo Harden, and Tom O'Brien. Thank you so much for helping out when we needed you so badly. In the control room, we have Anita Bailey, Ashley O'Young, Renee Bennett, and Rebecca Swanson. Under Rich and Drew's guidance, today's episode has been made possible. Our opening music is from a track called Sapta Tandava, and the body music is by Cesar de Para, created just for Yoga Express. Yoga Express airs Monday through Friday on Time Warner 57, RCN 84, and Fios 35, at 1.30 in the afternoon. Now, I did mention the body music, and I would love to hear a little more. It's very, very soft at the moment. If our crew can just bring the volume up just a little bit. We're gonna have Yael address a few of the questions that have been flipping through my, flitting through my mind for quite some time now. Yael, we, you mentioned in the last episode, we talked you were dressed in orange. Yes. You actually had a live taping that evening and you told me you were going to talk about the orange chakra, the second chakra, the navel which is Swadashana, navel chakra, the one just below the navel. Today you're dressed all in indigo, so I assume you're going to talk about the Ajna Chakra, which is between the eyebrows, eyebrow center. Now, I know we touched upon something very important. You mentioned that you dress to, ref or many of us dress to reflect our mood. And I'm wondering if it's just some kind of inner perversion in me, because I dress to help me get into that mood. So if I want to feel joyful, I want to dress in red and orange. If I want to calm down a little bit, I'm, I want to dress in either blue, possibly even green, but mostly blue and, some, and purple. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'm really agitated, I'm really hyper excited, and I'm wearing purples to help cool me down. 
So is that going to help me achieve the same yes, thing? Yes, yes. It, does. it, it, okay. it works both ways because it works inside because mm -hmm. it's on your skin, so the color right. vibrates a certain energy, so it goes inside. Right. So you can transcend yourself. Like you say, if you wake up and you're angry, you're red, right. you can change that by putting another color on you and it will assist you to release that anger. So right. it's it's perfect and it works outside because when people see you and right. you vibrate. So one is for the external no. world, one is for, for the, the inner internal. world. So that takes care of the first two steps of Ashtanga Yoga, which is personal and then Fantastic. social. Yes. That's good. So the third one is breathing, which I understand you're going to start off. It's a breathing technique that I apply breathing. every time I feel like I am out-centered. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody call you from Con Edison and tell you they're going to turn off your bill. You see, <laughs> this you is, this is what I experienced last week. Right, right. My head started to shake because my two girls was at home with my nanny. I couldn't leave to be able to handle that. I said exactly this. First, I talked to the universe, which is mm -hmm. you, your own verse, your universe, your voice. And I quiet myself down by closing my eyes and I breathe four times in. Mm -hmm through your stomach, mm -hmm. not your chest. Then you keep that for seven. When I say seven time, it depends on being. It might count slower or faster. Me, I follow my heartbeat rhythm. Right. Because I can right. hear it. Because I've been doing it for a while. And when you do it for a while, or you can do it really fast and hear it if you're really paying attention. Mm -hmm. Or you put your hand on your heart and you breathe four time in your heartbeat. Keep it for seven. and release eight. What's when really you happening that? when you exhale? That's what helps calm us down, right? Yes. Because a lot of the times we tell people when they're agitated, we tell them take a deep breath. It's almost like you're running out of breath. We're taking a deep inhale, but it's really in the release. And of release. course, those who are asthma prone, they want to be careful not to hold their breath. So if you're asthma prone, you think someone in your family has asthma, you've got it in your genes, do not hold your breath, even if it means sacrificing a little bit of the calming down process. Um, go and on. then after you do that the first time, your body, it can feel your body calming down. The second time you do that process, your body gets used to it. And the third time, you feel it like the outside is not disturbing the inside anymore. Right. You're back centered. And suddenly, the thing that you want to happen will happen, which is the thought like part of the matter. So it's just mind over matter? Yes. So what you're doing is you're channeling all that energy. So where the mind goes, energy flows. So you're channeling that energy mm -hmm. into the one thought that you want to take care of at that moment. At that moment, instead of unraveling right. and, and, and focusing on what could happen that didn't happen yet. Right. <laughs> and then you come back center and say, OK, what is, what is it right now? What, what is right now in the front of me? OK, how can I resolve this? Mm -hmm. And the solution comes right after. Okay. So that's the technique that I use every day, all the time. Right, right. Just to calm you down. To calm myself down, come back centered. It brings, brings to mind something that I find fascinating, because when I was doing my teacher training for yoga, we were asked to do a lot of research. And there is this assumption that all human bodies, all human living creatures, human beings are entitled, just hypothetically speaking, let's say we're entitled to 500 million breaths. The moment we slow down each one of those breaths, instead of taking five inhales, five counts of inhale, 10 counts of exhale, which is 15 seconds, let's say it's 15 seconds, so that's four breaths a minute. Mm -hmm. If we extend our breathing to about one minute per breath, we've already extended our lifespan four times. I heard about that too. But you know what? I tried telling this to my son when he was about 16 or 17. And he sa I said, you know what? If you just relax and extend your breathing span. Mm -hmm. You live longer. By four times. You live longer. He said, Ma. And I said, that's how the sages used to live for 400 years. He said, Mom, in those days, that's all they did. All they did was <laughs> breathe. I have a life to live. That's, you know, it, young people don't always get it straight away because they have such a hectic life. But I think they understand the importance of breathing. They do. And that's when we try to teach them techniques. So when you're asking people to inhale to a certain count, instead of actually counting, what, what I tend to do, and this, this is what my teachers also have taught me, it helps them 
if we have a chant. And it doesn't have to be a Sanskrit chant. Mm -hmm. I have my own chant, which when I time myself, it may take me 15 seconds to go through the whole thing. So mm -hmm. my breath, the let's say I take 15 seconds inhale, by the time I finish that chant, I've already completed the inhale. And then I do that chant twice as I exhale. So my exhale is twice as long. Whatever helps you. So I like that breathing technique. So you inhale, let's say to the count four of four. Four time. Hold it to three. Hold two to seven. To seven. And okay. then also the numbers have a vibrating energy. Everything. Yes, I'd like to know that. So what, four what is, is that? for Jupiter, okay. which is matter. Right. So you inhale Jupiter. Okay. Then seven is the number of the pyramid which is the comeback centered and the balance, mm -hmm. and eight, the universe. Right, the okay. The renewal. Renewal of life. Of life, okay. and you come back centered to being that you are. So the inhale and the exhale are almost about the same length, and it's almost. the holding of the breath, so the whole breath itself is nice and balanced. Yes. Very nice. Why don't we do a couple of the breathing, or is there anything else you want to add? Right now, uh, we, were, we, we were talking about the color, which is the sixth chakra, mm -hmm. which is the third eye chakra, what we call it the third eyes, because the pineal gland, we have it since I kept my girl open at that level. No conditioning, just being right. here. It keeps your pineal gland open. Science till now doesn't understand what is the purpose of that, but I know that in your culture and other culture, they know that it's the purpose of seeing other than what we're seeing out there, there is much more than this. It opened our eyes to see clearer to energy, not only matter, because everything that you see at the end by science is atom and everything is moving. So nothing is actually really hard. It's, it's, it's deeper than that, but on the same time, it's very understandable. Everything is ticked together by energy. So when we talk about the sixth chakra, is the pineal gland chakra, and it allowed you, when you keep this one open, to see more than what is. And by what I understand on some information that I get online too, it says by the Ori of Emmy, it, it, it's, it is on purpose to release confusion. Mm -hmm. release ignorance, allow knowledge of true will and courage to connect to the gods. So a clarity of thinking. Clarity of thinking. So the pineal really is actually in the back of the brain. The pituitary is in the front. Isn't that correct? Pituitary is in the eyebrow center. So you're really helping us reach from the front to the back? We, by what I understand, the pineal gland is centered it's here, in the front. but it's also, it's also centered to the... To, to the well, okay. Okay, I to know. over here, but right, that's right, what right. I but saw. But they are there to uh, attach the brain. Uh, pineal apparently is in the front, uh, pituitary is in the back, but they're yes. both connected. They're One both is connected. taking us from the body, because pituitary actually is responsible for all the hormones, yes. all the secretions. Yes. And the other one's for the brain. So one of them actually, you were talking about the brain clarity of thinking, which yes. means it'll also help all the mental ailments to be able yes. to focus on that eyebrow center. Focus and about insomnia, then. sleeplessness, yes. things like that. And most of the time people, when they have a headache, is because they're not handling something that right. is really My clear. Brains, yeah. your, your brain will start to focus on, okay, you're not handling something right now, and then if you don't handle it for a long time, then you start to have pain stress and, and stress in the shoulder right. and then it's going to go all the way down to your body. Right. So if you right. allowed your pineal gland to be awakened, you will have less headache. Mm -hmm. And then most of the time people get massage here when right. they have a headache right. because right. this is the area where everything come back centered before going to, like you said, the seven chakra, which right. is the purple the color. Pituitary. So when you talked about the massage in the center, that reminds me of something else. We have a very simple technique in yoga, we call it Trataka. Okay. You know, we talk about yoga for the body, yoga for the mind, no one talks about yoga for the face. We have yoga okay. for the face, as in for the tongue, nose. Nose is of course the breathing technique, but different right. types of breathing techniques. We have yoga for the ears, and you have yes. the sound therapy. But also for the eyes, we watch Trataka. People think it's something crazy where you, you know, they call it candle gazing. Okay. So the eye literally, and my daughter-in-law has just graduated, she's a doctor, so okay. she, I confirmed with her, the eye has eight ocular points apparently. Okay. And tell me if that's, if I'm on the right track. You, because you, you're talking you, you, about are, you are guiding me to something that I, well, I, I like I'm to Well, I'm trying see. to clarify because you do all that mental work. You hypnotized me yesterday, <laughs> so I, you, you made me think along certain lines, which okay. really brought about the clarity of thought that you're speaking of. Mm -hmm. The eye has the it has eight ocular points. So when we look at it, and we, here's where that number eight comes into uh, mm -hmm. play. It has 
a point here, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. That's why I took my glasses off. And the same thing on the other eye. Okay. So when we move our eyes like a, in an eight formation, okay. we're actually exercising the ocular points. And that's why every morning when I wake up, and when I was young, my mother used to had me do this. She forced me to do this. I never asked her why, but now I'm starting to learn why. She never told me why because her mother never told her why. But <laughs> what we would do is rub our palms together okay. and then cup our palms and place it over the eyes. So is My that grandmother told me that, but right. it never explained me why to. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's happening is it's increasing the circulation in those ocular okay. points. And you know, nowadays we understand it better and we try to seek out the answers because we work so much on the computers. So what's happening is our peripheral vision is reduced to just yes. a screen, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't look around sideways. So if I'm on the street and I'm not able to see who's behind me, I could just have someone attacking me, I would never know. I talk about having eyes in the back of the head. This is, you know, literally, you're just improving our peripheral vision. But I like the way you explained the number eight, eight. as well. So that Affinity. seems to apply. So can you, just very quickly before we do a little bit of stretching, can you also touch on the three planets again? What was that again, Jupiter? It was Jupiter for the number four. Okay. And then the number seven. What is seven, the significance of four? The number four, it's, uh, is the, because the, it's the design of the number four right. is the sign of Jupiter. Oh, I see. I didn't know that. Okay. It's okay. the sign of right, Jupiter. Right, so okay. I took Jupiter, which is a matter planet, uh -huh. out of our solar system. Right. We compare planet to human being and how they can transcend themselves. Right. And each planet have obviously an energy toward the being per their sign, their zodiac sign. Huh? With they say they have 12, but actually it's 13th. So it's like really... Well, one of the planets disappeared, right? There's no... I don't know which one it is. It's probably... Is that Pluto, Uranus. they reduce it Pluto? to... Okay. to a, like because it was a dwarf planet, so they say, no, it's not a planet anymore. anymore. So okay. science have their ways and spiritually have their ways. Well, They're saying the point, same thing, but right. in, different in different ways. Way. But Jupiter, the sign of Jupiter is actually looking okay. like a four. So right. I took the four for that okay. the seven for the pyramid is a sign of the pyramid and the pyramid have a balance of the way it's designed the triangle right. and the eight for infinity and renewal so you breathe those energy in and exhale them out okay i love your explanations let's do a few physical stretches as well because our viewers also might want to stretch with us okay. but anything that will help us stay calm i understand we probably have about 10 or 12 minutes guys let me know uh, what we could do is instead of standing up, because everything has been so calming, let's do seated twists. Okay, is that that's perfect good? for me. And let me know if something is too high energy for our topic, you have to help me stop, because I'm very used to the physical side. You're the one who's going to keep me in check today. Okay? I'm very used to. <laughs> I will go back well, to Well, no, it. <laughs> I love your explanations. I need to calm down, because my mind doesn't always listen to me. My mind is always, you know, we have the... Maybe because you need to listen to your well, mind. <laughs> in yoga, we have, Tata Anjali has the yoga sutras. Number two, the second sutra is yoga chitta vritti nirodha. Literally, it means yoga is simply evacuating the mind of thoughts. And that's not happening. And that's where I need to learn how to meditate or be guided how to meditate yes. so it's really helpful that you're here so let's do this let's come on our hands and knees mm -hmm. they're not completely twists but the postures we take you through today are just very gentle undulating motions hands directly below the shoulders knees are directly below the hips toes are curled in fingers are nicely splayed now what we're going to do is as we inhale we're going to lift our chin chest and buttocks up and dip the torso and when we dip our torso obviously we go closer to the floor so you want to keep your elbows close to you inhale and dip this posture is actually called a cat Marjaria, yes. and uh, our director uh, in our shows on an everyday basis she actually has cats and she loves cats so we always dedicate this to her exhale uncurl your toes arch your back Let's try that one more time. For those of you in the control room, you can also do this in a seated position. You could just arch in and out right in your chair. Inhale and dip. Exhale, uncurl your toes, arch your back. Let's come in seated position with a couple of small tips. 
just remember when we arched our back it was a nice movement of the spine going in and out so what's happening is you're getting a spinal release right there our program is about moving from the body to the mind so once your body gets a nice workout your mind starts to come become still so talking about those evacuating the mind of thoughts we're trying to achieve it through the body yael is helping us through the mind tuck your left foot under your right butt and cross your right foot over your left knee this is a beautiful position you like this right <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful twist push your right knee in to the left talk your upper body to the right this position this posture is actually called half spinal twist by pushing your knee in and talking your body you're already quarter way there now hold on to your right knee with your right hand inhale the left arm up exhale dip your left elbow over the right knee and then either hold on to your left knee or to some part of your garment take your right hand behind you and then turn to look back so as you get stronger as your back gets stronger you can try and bring your hand your right hand closer to your buttocks right now i'm going to keep mine at midpoint it helps me turn around hold it i can hear the crack <laughs> i feel so good inhale very gently release your left hand untangle your legs and let's switch legs good observation you said you can hear the cracks Cracking. if you hear any pops and crackles don't be afraid they're air pockets and it's good that you hear them you hear rips and tears please go see a doctor tuck your right foot under your left buttock cross your left foot over your right knee your left your right foot the sole of your right foot faces the back of the room push your left knee in to the right and talk your upper body to the left hold on to your left knee with your left hand inhale the right arm up exhale dip your right elbow over your left knee and i'm going to use a little bit of help i'm going to push my left knee in and hold on to my right knee place your left hand behind you turn to look back now i need to hold on to a piece of my part of my body or a piece of my garment because if i don't i come undone but typically what happens is you're expected we are in yoga we try to keep that connection with our body so if you leave your hand suspended in mid air you'll feel a lot of tension in the body so you want to stay connected with your body turn to look back now if this posture feels a little tight for you you can wiggle your left foot forward that will help you turn a little deeper inhale and very gently release release your hand and then untangle your legs keep the left leg extended keep the right leg folded attach the sole of the right foot to the inside of the upper left thigh but at the same time you want to bring your right knee up just a little bit keep your left foot flexed and then here's what we're going to do hold on to your right ankle with your left hand bring your right knee out about just a little bit just enough for your body to come forward inhale the right arm up exhale wrap your right hand around your right knee take your left hand from behind oh, yes. and clasp the opposite fingers feels good doesn't it i remember this it's one. a good mm. balance for the other posture look yes. over your right shoulder take your left shoulder back over your right shoulder take your left shoulder back that will open up your pectorals so you're talking about pectorals the upper part on the left side of your chest so you're getting a nice opening and you're getting a beautiful release of the spine a good compression of your obliques on the right side as well inhale release your hands and let's extend the right leg out fold the left leg in now the reason we keep our foot flexed is so you feel a stretch in the back of the legs typically in yoga we try to get the maximum the most out of every stretch so you're not just getting a twist you're also getting a stretch you could point your toes and it looks very pretty but you're really <laughs> You're not getting the stretch of the back of the legs. You don't need a stretch for the front of the body. The front of the body needs to strengthen. The back of the body needs to stretch. So you want to get the most out of every stretch. Fold your left foot in. Keep your left foot close to the inside of the upper right thigh. Hold your left ankle with your right hand. Inhale the left arm up. Exhale, wrap your left hand around your left knee. Take your right hand from behind. Clasp the opposite fingers. Once you've made the connection, open up your right shoulder look over your left and keep your right foot flexed feel the stretch under your right leg 
Keep breathing. Don't forget when we ask you to hold, it's always hold your posture, never your breath. Or you're going to hear from Yael. Inhale, release your hands first. And then bring your left knee down to the floor. And I'm going to, oh, we just two of us, so we have enough space here today. Bring your left knee all the way down. Now, if you find that's a little difficult for you today, you can prop yourself up. Sit on a pillow or a block. Inhale the arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Exhale, fold from the hip. Place your palms over the sole of your foot, right foot. Give yourself a little bit of a massage right there. Mm. Keep in mind, 72,000 nerves end in the soles of your feet and the palms of your hands. Actually, Yael, that's why we feel so good when we clap it's our just, hands and yeah. stamp our feet. Oh, Feels trust wonderful. me, I really take care of my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Inhale. When you're a dancer, that's the first place that's that you true, take care of. Right. <laughs> Inhale, press your palms together. Let's come up. Keep your hands where they are and let's switch legs. Extend the left leg out, fold the right leg in. We probably have about a minute to go, so after mm -hmm. this, maybe we could just do a couple of breathing. You could guide us through. Okay. Let's do it together. Exhale and fold. Give yourself a delicious massage right there. Feel the stretch in the back of your legs. If your hands don't, don't go over your foot today, that's okay. Place your hands at your ankles, your shin, even your knee. Just do the best you can. Inhale, press your palms together. Let's come up. Exhale and release. Why don't you take us through a couple of those breathing techniques? Let's do that. So the, I you like this that comfortable. Posture, don't you? Yes. I was going to close with that. You wanted because it stretched my. It does the pelvic, um, the, the adductor pelvic, yeah. muscles inside of the thighs. And that was the easy position that I could do, still do after the pregnancy. Right. When I sit with the girls on the floor. But it's actually a prenatal posture too. It's intended for people who are going to have a baby, and it so really gives a good stretch. It feels good wonderful. stretch. It feels wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it brings you centered because you 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 know you're waddling like this. So <laughs> you know, it's, it it just feels like a child position. Right. It is. So very, kids just do it naturally. And very easily, they're not even questioning. <laughs> so we're going to take four breathe in. Put your hand on your heart. Feel your heart, and take four of your heartbeat in. We keep it for seven heartbeat. And exhale eight. Mm. 